Evening! Tonight's story is called The Egg and it's by M.P. Robertson and it's got one, two words in the title. I'm just going to move my cushion so I'm sitting a little bit higher otherwise you won't be able to see the book. And it says one day, this is the blurb on the back, one day George discovers a large egg under his mother's favourite chicken and he soon finds that he's looking after a baby dragon. George takes this job seriously and he gives the dragon lessons in fire and how to breathe it and how to distress a damsel. But the dragon wants to be with other dragons. So let's find out. It's a beautiful book, this one. It's got beautiful pictures, so we call them illustrations, don't we? It says, George knew something wasn't right. When he found more than he had bargained for under his mother's favourite chicken. Look at that. Look at the size of that egg. My goodness. He moved the egg to the warmth of his bedroom and for three days and three nights he read the egg stories. Goodness me, look at that. It's huge. He's had to get a wheelbarrow. <laughs> look, at the, look at the hen still on top, the chicken still on top. And look at George, he's reading a story sitting on top of the egg. Aren't the pictures, the illustrations beautiful? On the third night, there's our um, ordinal numbers. On the third night, the egg started to rumble. Can you see? Look at the pictures. And with this book, you actually don't need, need any words. Can you see the egg? It's that steam is coming out. And then there's a crack. George can see an eye. And the, some, the pictures just are so good, they tell the story. And look what's popped out. A dragon. When the dragon saw George, it gave a, cheer, cheer, a cheer of delight. George didn't speak dragon, but he knew exactly what the dragon had said. Mummy. George had never been a mother before, but he knew that it what his motherly duty to teach the dragon, dragony ways. Look at the dragon, he still hasn't come out of the eggs. A bit like when we had our chicks, isn't it? They took a while to come out of the eggs. The first lesson he taught the dragon was the fine art of flying. And there's the dragon on top of the chimney top. And there he is. George is, look at George, he's lost his glasses because the dragon's just learning. And then off he goes. Let's move this page. The second le lesson was fire and how to breathe it. Can you see George there? Look, he's toasting his sausages, isn't he? And the dragon is helping him by breathing fire. And <laughs> he's tied. I think this is the third lesson. And the third lesson was how to distress, how to distress a damsel. <laughs> And look, he's used possibly his sister tied to a pole to scare her, but I don't think she's bothered. And the final lesson was how to deaf a knight. That's like fight a knight, how to deaf a knight. And look, he's got his cauldron on top of his head. And there's the dragon there, look, pretending to fight George. I think George has got his dustbin lid. And then George is at the top, look, he's in the trees and he's waving his white flag. That means, I surrender. Oh, look at the pictures, they're just beautiful, aren't they? Look at that George and the dragon at night in the tree. Every evening, as all good mothers should, George read the dragon a bedtime story. One night as he read from a book of dragon tales, the dragon looked longingly at the pictures and a tear rolled down his cheek. The dragon was lonely and he was missing his own kind. He wanted other dragons to play with. The next morning, the dragon had gone and George woke up and he was very, very sad. He thought that he would never see his dragon again. But seven nights later, he was woken by the beating of wings. Excitedly, he pulled back the curtains there, perched in the tree, was the dragon. George opened the window and clambered onto his back. And look at that. Look at them in the night sky. Look at the moon. It's like a
like a moonlit night and there's George on top of the dragon. He hadn't forgotten his friend. They soared into the night sky, chasing the moon around the world, over oceans and mountains and cities. Faster and faster they went until they came to a place with neither north, south, east or west. Where do you think they'd gone? Look at that. Can you see the sky below and all the lights of the towns and the cities? Let's find out where they went. Look at that. They're into some dragony cave. They swooped down through the clouds on, into a cave that gaped like a dragon's jaw. This was the place where dragons lived. The dragon gave a roar of delight. He was home at last. Look, he's got other dragons to call his family. Finally, it was time for George to leave. Up, up, they flew, chasing sloop chasing sleep through the night until they could see his home below. And George hugged his dragon tight and the dragon gave a roar. George didn't speak dragon, but he knew exactly what the dragon had said. Thank you. Look at him hugging the dragon. Thank you. The end. And look at this even the blue is beautiful. It's not a lovely story of friendship and how George help the dragon find his family again. Beautiful. Now it's time for our prayer. I'll move my books back a little so you can, there we go, and see the light. Do you and heed. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. God our Father, we come to say thank you for your love today. Thank you for my family and all my friends you sent to me. Guard me in the dark of night and in the morning. Send your light. Amen. A rentard, a map, a respite lamp. Amen. Blow this out now. Ooh. Hope you have a, had a lovely day. And I'll post some last week of diagraphs or reception. This um, Next week's the last week. And I'll read you another story tomorrow. And I'll post your learning logs tomorrow morning as well. Okay. Hoi Can I go bless?